Enough is enough. We're always ranking how strong Ash and his Pokemon are, but what about his friends? How strong are they in comparison? Well, fret not, because in this video, we'll be ranking every Ash Ketchum companion from weakest to strongest. Alright, this is the tier list we'll be using to rank Ash's companions. Starting from rock bottom, we have the F tier, aka the useless tier. And can you guess who's the only one in this tier? Yeah, it's Max. Although he's smart and has some battle experience, that still doesn't change the fact that he has zero Pokemon. Kinda hard to prove your strength when you're missing the most important thing as a Pokemon trainer. Next, we move on to the E tier, aka the below average tier. And first up is Bonnie. She's shown little to no battling experience, but do you know what she has over Max? An actual Pokemon. Technically, the Denny's Clements, but it's basically Bonnie's. She uses it more than he does. Now, if we were counting Squishy, then ironically, Bonnie would be the strongest Ash Ketchum companion without question. But seeing how it's no longer with her, it wouldn't be fair to count that. They did promise to reunite once Bonnie's a proper trainer, though. So once that day comes, then we'll talk. Following Bonnie, we have Chloe. Honestly, I'm not surprised. Throughout the series, Chloe's only participated in a handful of battles, and her performance is pretty underwhelming compared to most other companions, if you even want to count Chloe as a companion. Using her father's Yamper, she's only defeated wild Pokemon, and with Eevee, all her major feats are never done solo. It's always with the help of someone else, so she really isn't that capable on her own. Now, that's not to say she's useless, but I also don't see her winning any gym badges anytime soon either. Next, we have the D tier, aka the average tier for trainers that possess average strength, but nothing too crazy just yet. And kicking off this tier is Lily. She is easily the weakest of the Alola gang, but she can at least hold her own. She's battled Lusamine's juiced up Clefable, with the help of Ash's Lycanroc, battled the Wild Tyranitar, with the help of a Totem Sandshrew, and even beat a Salamence at the Alola League, with the help of Kiawe. In a lot of ways, she's kind of like Chloe in that most of her major fights are with the help of others, but what separates her from Chloe is her access to the Sub-Zero Slammer Z-Move as well as Magearna. Magearna doesn't have any battle experience, but that Pokemon alone would probably do really well against the average trainer. Following Lily, we have Mallow. Like Lily, she mostly battles in group fights, so she hasn't really done much on her own. But she was able to fully evolve her Bounce Suite, and she even used the Shaman for a bit. It didn't do much though. Mallow can also use a Z-Move, giving her a slight advantage if things get too tough for her. However, she is weaker than Lana, as seen in their Alola League battle. And spoilers, Lana isn't too high on this tier list either, so that should tell you how strong Mallow is. Or isn't. Next is Tracy. He isn't really much of a battler and has only really been able to flex during Team Rocket fights, but like, anyone can do that. What truly makes him shine above everyone else so far though, is the fact that he has an old warrior Scyther that was the leader of its swarm. It might have lost its leadership in a fight, but it's still a Pokemon with years of experience that would be quite the challenge for Chloe, Lily, and even Mallow. Speaking of which, next is Lana. She's pretty easy to rank as, like I said, she was able to defeat Mallow. Aside from that, there really isn't too much else that she's done that could make her go any higher. She survived the Alola League Battle Royal, she got Primarina's exclusive Z-Move, but she also gets bodied by Guzma, so she's not that strong. After Lana, I have Sophocles. Man, these Alola kids just don't battle, do they? At first, he might have seemed like the weakest Alola member next to Lily, but he's actually grown quite a bit. He evolved his Charger Bug, trained his Z-Move with Ash and Kiawe, defeated Mina at the Alola League, and even held his own against Kiawe. That's kind of impressive for a companion that doesn't focus on battling. And the final member of this tier is Serena. Like most companions, Serena has been able to defeat Team Rocket multiple times, but she also has a few more feats under her belt. She was able to hold her own against Kalos Queen Aria, she held her own in a tag battle against Ash and Tierno, and she even did a great job battling with Ash's Pikachu, showing that she does have the skill to battle with Pokemon that she doesn't normally use. In Journeys, we also learned that her Brakeson has fully evolved now, so she's definitely gotten stronger since XY. Now we move on to the C tier, aka the above average tier, and kicking off this tier is Silent. Silent is definitely stronger than your average trainer. On top of being a former gym leader, Silent has also been able to keep his skills sharp while traveling with Ash. He once bodied Burgundy, he competed in countless battle tournaments, defeated Trip, and even destroyed Juniper and Bianca at the same time when Ash took an L in that fight. Honestly, I would love to put Silent much higher because clearly he's shown time and time again that he's a competent trainer. Unfortunately, competence does not always equal strength as Silent has also taken L's from Skyla, another gym leader, and even the subway bosses, so he still has some room to grow. 
Maybe if he wasn't busy fishing all the time, he'd be a lot better. After Silen, we have Kiawe. As a rival to Ash, Kiawe has always been battling and training with him at the Pokemon School. Prior to even meeting Ash, he already defeated Olivia to gain his grandfather's Z-Ring, setting him up as a seasoned trainer from the jump. He also defeated Ace Arola in the Alola League, battled Tapu Lele as part of Tapu Fini's trial, and defeated Gladion's Nialigo in a battle royal. With the goal of becoming an island kahuna, Kiawe has definitely been working hard to become stronger than the average trainer. Next up, we have good old Brocco. He's an interesting one, cause unlike Silen, after Brock left his gym, he didn't really display much of his gym leader strength outside of a few rare glimpses. That all changed in Sun and Moon though, as the boy returned with rock hard abs and a mega steelix. He was able to easily defeat Kiawe, held his own against Olivia, and even soloed the Team Galactic admins during the Arceus Chronicles. Talk about a glow up. Following Brock is best girl Dawn. Don't let the fact that she does contests distract you, cause Dawn is a pretty capable Pokemon trainer. On top of fighting countless tough battles alongside Ash, she was also the runner-up of the Sinnoh Grand Festival, meaning she had to have had some good battle skills to make it that far. Contest battles are a lot more complex than your average Pokemon battle, requiring a lot of strategy. And as seen with Dawn's battle against Silent, it can prove to be quite the advantage. And closing out this tier is Clement. This guy was kind of a weakling in the beginning, but thanks to the inspiration of Ash, Clement trained hard and became a serious gym leader. It's amazing to see how much he improved in the battle against Ash. And although he doesn't really do much after that, you can tell that the strength is still there. He was able to defeat Zorosic to get his gym back, and it's even revealed that he battled against Elite Four Drosna. Granted, he didn't win, but the fact that he got the chance to battle her shows that Clement has some strength that's to be respected. Now Clement losing to her is actually perfect because it helps with figuring out what the cutoff would be before the next tier. And that tier is the B tier, aka the Elite Four tier, for trainers that rival Elite Four members. Kicking off this tier is Misty. She didn't do much in the original series, but then comes back in AG as a competent gym leader alongside her Gyarados. Then that same Gyarados is able to Mega Evolve in Sun and Moon, with a Twister and Rain Dance strategy that is near impossible for challengers to overcome. And if you wanted even more proof of Misty's strength, then there's also the fact that she was able to defeat Ash's Corefish, a Pokemon strong enough to defeat Battle Frontier opponents. So yeah, Misty is a lot stronger than we give her credit for. Next is Mei. Same as Dawn, Mei has a lot of contest battling experience under her belt, with her competing in two grand festivals while traveling with Ash. Then after that, her Blaziken evolves and even holds its own against Ash's Sceptile. You know, the same one that can defeat a Darkrai. Mei was also able to outperform Zoe in battle, and the reason she lost to Dawn is because she was using her newest Pokemon against Dawn's oldest Pokemon. If she was using Blaziken, I think we all know that Mei would have wiped the floor with Dawn. She is really strong. And closing out the Elite Four tier, we have Go. I know a lot of people are fuming right now, but you cannot ignore the facts. Go's development was extremely rushed because the writers clearly wanted to make him an equal to Ash, the guy who became the world's strongest. Because of this, Go has been in way more tougher fights than the average Ash companion. He's defeated Oleana, battled Eternatus, battled Zapdos, Moltres, Articuno, and Lugia, and even battled Mewtwo. He's also caught a Regieleki, and this legendary doesn't come and go as it pleases like Suicune does, so if he battled against every companion, most of them would be screwed. And now for the final tier, the A tier, aka the Champion tier. This tier is reserved for our final companion, and that person is none other than Iris. It is insane to see how much she's grown from her annoying persona and best wishes to becoming a powerful and lovable champion. Not just that, but she's also ranked the 7th strongest trainer in the world. No other companion has reached this level of strength. Now sure, Ghost caught legendaries, but he doesn't have the experience of Iris. Her Dragonite was able to put up a fight against the Weather Trio, she was able to demolish Dawn in battle, and her Axio became so strong that it held its own against Cynthia's Mega Garchomp. Until it lost. Still, Iris' accomplishments are truly remarkable, and she has rightfully earned her place as Ash's strongest companion. Thank you all for watching this video. Let me know in the comments how you'd rank Ash's companions. Shout out to the amazing channel members for their support and consider joining as well to watch these videos days early. Last but not least, make sure to live your life to the fullest and have yourself a damn good one.